Hi everyone, welcome to today's Tsinghua Live. I'm Ya Ge. Porcelain, which originated in China, took a long time to reach the modern material. Nowadays, the white gold porcelain, once mistaken as shell by the West, has spread to the rest of the world. Today's live is about modern Chinese porcelain. We will take you to a local factory like this one in Zibo City, Shandong Province, to show you how Chinese delicate Chinese porcelain artifacts are made and what developments Chinese people have made recently in producing porcelain. And by the way, for those of you watching our live show right now, please feel free to ask questions, leave us comments, and give us thumbs up. Thank you. So where I'm standing right now is uh, well the production department, well, well which porcelain artifacts are made in China, like this a very typical factory in Zibo City. Well, don't underestimate a local workshop like this. It has made ten sets and altogether 140 sets pieces of porcelain artifacts recently, which were later collected by the National Museum of China. Amazing, right? I mean. How did they make it? I guess some of you may picture a few astonishing scenes right now. Yet, the process of making porcelain, which we will witness in a minute, might not seem so, well, let me put it this way, uh, glittering. Each step is quite normal, yet very crucial. So to have a porcelain cups like this one is very beautiful. We have the, you know, well, the, the blue color, the yellow color, and it's very delicate. So this is a typical piece uh, this local factory made recently. It's called the Chinese dragon. To have a cup like this one, usually it takes seven steps. So let's go and have a look which seven steps we have. So the first step of making porcelain artifacts is called batching. Well, the workers will blend different ingredients and the mixture will be the base of porcelain. So through our camera, we can see a uh, colorful, well, different kinds of ingredients are put into one blending machine. It's like a, like a, a huge pipe. So uh, these ingredients will be mixed in proportion, which is, well, actually a secret that only a few workers know. So unfortunately, I couldn't tell you exactly what proportion uh, it is, because I don't know either. The mixture is said to make quartz enriched porcelain, which is one of the breakthroughs we have in these years. Some of you may wonder why porcelain producing could have any breakthroughs. We're just using these wares in our daily life to eat, to drink, right? Well, actually, that's not quite the case. Chinese people have a special thing for porcelain, even a long time ago. We have the origin of making porcelain, which could trace back to, uh, well, even Neolithic period, which is about 10,000 years ago. And since then, porcelain has been for everyday usage and at the same time has a deeper meaning, for example, for admiration and sacrifice. And all over these years, we are trying to improve the quality so it could be more durable and also to make it more delicate, to give it more stories so it could show the world a vivid Chinese culture. So back to quartz and rich porcelain we have just mentioned. Scholars around the world once had the idea that porcelain artifacts are unlikely to include too much quartz as it would be too fragile. However, the local experts did not buy this, and they have found a way to make things possible. In 1984, they successfully made the first quartz enriched porcelain, which later won an international golden award. I was, well, personally speaking, I was very, really amazed by these Chinese experts. Although we own the origin of porcelain, as it spread to the rest of the world, porcelain made by other countries are becoming quite famous nowadays. For example, Europe has born China, which is growing more and more popular, yet Chinese people do not come to a halt, and we never stop exploring, and quasi-rich porcelain like this one is a payoff. So what is so good about quasi-rich porcelain? Why should we have porcelain like that one in our daily life? Uh, with the roar of the machines and the workers working behind us. Let me give you more detailed information about this new kind of porcelain. Wow. 
while its hardness is bigger, which makes it more durable, and it has more strength, which makes it not so easy to break. Well, also it has better heat stability, which means that if we take it out from the microwave and uh, put it directly into the cold water, it will not break. Well, someone may ask, why should we have better heat stability? Okay, just picture the scene when we cook. We heat a dish with the microwave or the oven, for example, and then when it is done, we put it on the table, right? Which, well, whose surface is of course very cold. You certainly do not want the plate to break and, well, then you couldn't eat the dish, right? Okay, so all these three qualities, well, uh, hardness, strength, and heat stability, all these three qualities ensure that when we are using quass-enriched porcelain products every day, they can have a longer life. So after the mixture is made, um, well, here comes the second step, which is called shaping. And there are usually two ways of shaping. The first one is to pour the mixture into a mold and leave it until it is firm. And that one is the traditional measure uh, kind of way to make porcelain. And the second one is stamping. Well, this is a quite, well, a very creative way uh, nowadays to produce porcelain. Following our camera, we can see uh, the worker is using the machine to punch the mixture, the mixture we have produced from the first step to form certain shapes. So, well, I don't know if uh, there's any difference between, uh, well, stamping and uh, pouring into the mold. So I'm going to ask the workers to, to, to let him to tell me if there's any difference uh, of this kind of two kinds of ways. Marshall,你好 so, uh, uh, Mr. Ma told me, he's a very uh, well experienced worker here, he told me that what is the difference between these two kind of way to shape? Uh, well, traditionally we use well, pouring the mixture into the mold to shape, but that is not very well efficient. And for, you know, like things like uh, cups, were like well let me say plate something like that which is the shape is very ordinary which is very regular we can use this kind of a new way to uh, make porcelain which is very effective and also it can uh, you know reduce the uh, cost uh, and for you know things like uh, other things like the bottle or the you know like the uh, something that is not having a regular shape then we're going to use the traditional measure so now through our camera, what we are seeing is the uh, one of the ways of shaping, uh, which is to pour the mixture into a mold and leave it until it is firm. So while the worker is now pouring the mixture into the mold, and one by one. So after the mixture is firm, we will have the, uh, you know, like what we have like a like a well the shaped one of the porcelain artifacts and worker is well is shaking the mold a little bit so this is kind of a the different way to uh, you know made porcelain artifacts which do not have a regular shape like uh, say a cup like a coffee cup and throughout camera we can see now we're seeing is the uh, sh the firmed uh, the artifacts which uh, we have 
after the mixture is poured into the mold and after it is firm. And later, after the uh, second step, we will have other workers will you know do something else, like they're going to put different pieces of the mold together. And I guess that needs a lot of patience. Okay, so after, well, the person is shaped, the workers will carry all these pieces of uh, artifacts and put them, well, carry them a long way actually, and put them here to firm. Okay, so uh, through our camera, we can see the workers are now uh, putting artifacts onto well one by one and uh, these artifacts are waiting here to go into the fire to actually this is the th third step uh, which is called the the firing step and these artifacts are actually they're unglazed so to have a uh, Quas enriched artifacts, porcelain artifacts like this, usually, well, the artifacts will be put in fire twice. So this is the first time that they will be put in fire. And later, when it is glazed, it will be put in fire again, but in a lower temperature. So the third step is to put on glazed artifacts in a high temperature. And uh, I've asked one of the workers, and he told me that it usually takes about nine hours uh, for this step. So it's actually it's a quite a long time. Through our camera, we can see uh, the fire, and uh, you know the well the things, the porcelain artifacts are in a high temperature. Uh, well, the uh, all kinds of poison artifacts are put into this kind of uh, like a machine, the firing machine, and they will be fired in a high temperature for about nine hours. Well, there we have uh, all kinds of artifacts like the plate, like the uh, like the bowl, and they're put on the shelves one by one. And after they're put into this kind of machine, then the workers will close the door. And then, well, this kind of, uh, the third step will begin in a minute. So next, this unglazed wares, after they're, you know, put out from the fire machine, uh, and cut out and then they will be put in a machine like that through our camera we can see a machine full of rubbles for polishing so this is the fourth step actually for polishing to make the surface of the porcelain artifacts to look more shiny and after that then they will be carried to a group of pressmen for the next step, which is, uh, well, we will see later. And stay tuned, there will be more funny stuff coming up. So the next step after polishing is glazing. And we can see the worker is, uh, well, this is uh, for glazing, we have three steps. The first one is to deep, we put them put the, like I said, the plate into the, this kind of uh, glaze and then make a turn and then lift it up. 
So usually it takes three steps for blazing. We have to this kind of a pinky pinky play. I'm going to talk to the worker to ask her something that I'm very curious about, and I guess um, some of our audience may also be curious about it. 老师您好，嗯，我想问你一下，您这个干这个多长时间？So, uh, 您贵姓？啊，我姓孙。So, Miss Sun has worked here for about ten years. 那您从这个学程要花了多长时间？就学徒是多长时间？一个月，一个月。哎，您这个整个这个一个月算是快的呀，还是一般大家都是这个时间？嗯，都是这个时间，学徒就是一个月。Okay, okay so, uh, to achieve this, to have this kind of, uh, you know, craftsmanship. This uh, Miss Sue has taken about one month, and it usually takes one month to achieve this. And I think this is quite fast. 那您大概一天，像比如说这个盘子能使用多少多少个？嗯，四百多个。四百多个。嗯。好，很多呀。嗯，这个比较容易嗯上点。如果是那个复杂的，就少一点，会少一点。那比如说，您给我举个例子，什么比较复杂？ Okay, so I have to ask uh, Miss Sue how many kinds of, uh, you know, how many plates will she glaze every day? And he told me that it's about 400 pieces. And I think that's a lot. And then Miss Sue, uh, Sue told me that for something else like uh, the cup or something else that doesn't have a regular shape and it's harder to glaze. Well, I think it's quite difficult to shape because you have to make sure the glaze is evenly covering the whole surface of the porcelain artifacts. So after the porcelain artifacts are glazed, and then we come to the next step, which is to line, to ink the line on the, say, the cups. Uh, so every worker will, you know, to use a writing brush like that and they will ink the line on the cup by hand. So I, I think, well, it seems not that hard, but actually it is quite difficult because you have to make sure the lines are exactly the same because your, your hands cannot shake. You have to make sure the lines are parallel to each other. Well, I'm curious, like, how long have they in practice to achieve that. So we have this kind of uh, silver lines on every cup. It looks very, uh, you know, gorgeous. And it's really fast because it usually takes about two seconds for lining, for to line, you know, just one cup. And then also I'm wondering how many cups will they ink every day? 老师您好，您好，您能告诉我您大概在这地方这个描线多长时间？呃，从九九年开始。九九年开始。So， 呃，您贵姓？我姓张。姓张。张。啊。So， 呃 ，Miss Zhang has worked here for about well started in 1999. So I, you know how many years she has worked here. 那您学徒大概多长时间？就是学。练的比较熟练，描这个线。比如是说，把这个下衣就结合我至少得，差不多得，至少得两年。两年。啊啊，都至少得两年。好 ，So I also asked Mr. Miss John how many years uh did she practice to achieve this kind of skills, and she told me that it's about takes at least two years to achieve that. So it's you know it's really hard to have this kind of craftsmanship. Wow, that's really amazing. 那您能再给我们讲讲您大概这个一天下来这样描线杯子，比如说就说杯子能描多少个？差不多得四四百四百来个，四百来个。So Miss Zhang also told me that uh for every day she could you know ink the line like that for about say cups about four hundred cups to five hundred cups. So that's a lot.
well, I'm trying to <laughs> learn the skills, but I, I don't know if I can achieve that. I'm asking Miss Zhang to <laughs> teach me how to ink the line. I'm going to try this. <笑>那么你出剑的时候 <laughs> well, my hand is shaking very hard. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and I think I failed. <laughs> I don't know exactly what I'm doing. Oh. Like this? Uh, you know, the lines are like that. It's <laughs> But I think I've made improvement because Miss Zhang have also, uh, you know, praised me because you know, see the lines here are better. <laughs> well, that's a very funny experience. <laughs> okay, and then it comes to the final step, which is to put on glazed artifacts, porcelain artifacts, in a lower temperature. And I have asked the workers how long does it take, and the workers told me that it usually take about. Uh, you know, three hours, and sometimes uh, for certain pieces of course and artifacts, it takes longer for about 48 hours sometimes. And uh, temperature will be lower than the previous step when the porcelain artifacts, the unglazed porcelain ar artifacts, are put in fire. And here, for the glazed porcelain artifacts, it usually take about 700 Celsius degree. Okay, so we have witnessed the whole process of making Chinese porcelain, modern Chinese porcelain artifacts. Aren't you curious about the results? What do they look like in the end? And now let's go and find it out in the exhibition hall.
And as we are on our way to see the beautiful porcelain products, let me provide you with some details about the porcelain history here in Zibo City, Shandong Province. Yes, many of you may wonder why Zibo. And some of you may think of Jingduozhen City in Jiangxi Province when we talk about Chinese porcelain. But a lot may not know that Zibo City is also one of the birthplaces of Chinese porcelain. Actually, the history starts around 10,000 years ago, yet for a long time, the quality of original ingredients were not so good. And also wars took place from time to time, making it impossible to settle down for people and to make porcelain. And after the reform and opening up, the local determined to do something to change this kind of situation. And they finally came up with the idea of Fuqua's enriched porcelain. So when did Chinese porcelain spread to other countries? Well, in 1705, a French missionary named Pierre Francois Xavier d'Antregol came to China and found out the way of making porcelain. And later in 1708, an alchemist named Johann Friedrich Bogger made the first European porcelain. So now we have arrived at the exhibition hall. And through our camera, we can see there are so many delicate Chinese porcelain artifacts, like this one you are seeing right now through our camera. And um, what we have in this exhibition hall are not all for daily usage. They're more than that, because they're regarded as arts and as a representation of Chinese culture. In fact, many of the artifacts have served or witnessed big occasions, such as meetings of leaders on a national level or international summits, such as APAC. And also, some of the artifacts are deeply beloved and purchased by foreign friends from countries such as the United States, UK, and Russia. So Chinese people have not only integrated porcelain into daily life, using porcelain products to drink, to eat, etc. But also we are trying our best to enhance to make it more meaningful, home and abroad. OK, so to get more information, more detailed information about some of the very delicate Chinese porcelain artifacts, we are very lucky to have an expert today, Ms. Liu. Uh, 你好. 你好. Uh, so, well, the first thing I'm wondering is about this ball. Uh, through our camera, you can see this ball. It's like it's not totally in white. So, can you tell us what this is? This is not a pure white. It's not a pure white. Yes, this is the most important thing about Gao Shi Yin's. It's very warm, but in the light of the sun, it will show a very warm white. Let me show you. So Miss Liu told me that uh, this kind of uh, color is called ivory yellow. It's not white. It's called ivory yellow. And in light, it is uh, you know very shiny and it's looking like jade. And Miss Liu is showing us that it's, and uh, we can see like it's almost like crystal. Yes. Wow, this is very beautiful. <laughs> 那我们的高石英瓷呢，主要成分呢是石英，嗯、而结晶完美的石英呢就是水晶。水晶呢可以带给人们很好、很美好的一个寓意。Okay, so also quartz enriched. So this is what we call quartz enriched porcelain, which we have just mentioned in the production department. And quartz enriched uh, porcelain artifacts are not just very you know durable in everyday usage, but it also has a very deep meaning, because Crystal in Chinese has a meaning for you know happiness, for fortune, and etc. Now, I still think this 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 table can be called a table, right? Yes. It feels very Chinese. Yes. So through our camera, you can see uh, you know like this kind of sets of porcelain artifacts look quite exotic, and I wonder what's the stories behind this kind of set. Can you tell us what this table is called? 嗯，这是以“一带一路”为主题的一套餐具，充满了这个敦煌元素和波斯风情。嗯，这套餐具的名字呢，叫做“光耀盛世”。嗯 ，So, uh, this kind of sets of porcelain artifacts is called the Belt and the Road. So it has a, you know, get get the inspiration from, uh, the Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, and we can see there are Dunhuang elements involved in the. You know the this kind of sets. The first one is uh, you know we are involving Chinese 
musical instruments here. And looking at this one, uh, well, it looks like a Chinese lute, don't you think so? I mean, the shape, like that one. And also, to mention a few details here, we have, uh, you know, printed patterns here. So we have like ships like that on the sea on one hand, and also on the other hand, we have, uh, yes, camels. A team of camels walking here. So this is uh, representing, you know, the two kinds of things, which is one is on the road, and the two, second thing is on the sea. So I think, uh, also I think, uh, is that a kind of uh, shape of the ship? <laughs> 对，这也是体现了一个海上丝绸之路的一个呃造型造型的产品，像一个帆船一样。嗯 ，So this is also uh like a you know from camera can see like a ship. It's very creative, I think. Yes, this one is also like a ship. So uh beside this one, I also I noticed that here we have a is that a pattern, uh, the, 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 the drawing by Vincent van Gogh. Here we have the, this is the Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. And also we have the Chinese printing. So it's like a combination of the East and the West. So, so it's like we are not just uh, making uh, things to represent the traditional Chinese culture, but also we are doing a kind of connection and integration work to show the world like, uh, like what it is uh, what it's, uh, looking like to have two kinds of different kinds of elements involved together. Uh, so this kind of size is called the Chinese dragon. Uh, so we can see uh, here we have this, you know, this blue thing. This is the Chinese dragon, right? And also the kind of yellow color represented like color of a, a royal from the palace so it's very elegant and this kind of set is usually used in big occasions like on the meetings on the national level and also it's a kind of a gift for uh, to give to our foreign guests now well I'm wondering like we are this is called the Chinese dragon but also we have a phoenix over there. 那边那个也是凤,这个中华龙为什么里面会有凤呢?因为龙嘛在中国就是是一个男人的象征,那我们后来呢又设计了一套这个凤显牡丹系列,是专门给女士设计的,寓意这个龙凤成祥。so uh, we're not only having dragons here, we're also having phoenix, like this one is the, you know, the phoenix. So dragon in traditional Chinese meaning, it has a kind of meaning for men, for male power. But uh, we are trying to have a balance between men and women, so that's why we have the phoenix involved here. So the sets for uh, women is uh, representing, uh, represented by phoenix. There are a lot of blue, <laughs> well, like blue, porcelain artifacts here. And uh, I was really amazed by the color because it's very beautiful and shiny. This表面摸着是非常光滑的,但是里面是这个非常饱满的360度的球体的结晶 OK, so uh, our camera can give a... Like, yes, and uh, for our camera we can see there are very little tiny beads inside I don't know if you can see very clearly, but to me, uh, <laughs> I like it a lot So it's look like... A, Caviar, don't you think so? So this kind of uh, piece of uh, work has involved a very difficult, uh, several difficult techniques like transmutation and color changing. So you can see that it's not totally in one kind of color in blue. You know, it's on the very top, it's like a little bit wider, but on the uh, bottom, it's a little bit darker. So this is a kind of work that involves a lot of secret, but very difficult horror techniques, uh, which is a secret to me and to the public, because only a few craftsmen know the details. Uh, okay, thank you very much. So I think uh, through, you know, to show you 
all this delicate transports and artifacts. Uh, we're not only having porcelain things for daily usage. We're not only using them to drink, to eat, to you know, drink coffee or teas or whatever, but we're involving a kind of thinking thoughts in each piece of work. We're trying to involve something in it. We're trying to have some deeper meanings for every piece of work. We're trying to send our wishes to the world to show the world what Chinese culture means in every piece of porcelain artifact works. Okay, so there are more funny things coming up because we're going to uh, invite an old craftsman to show us uh, what it means to carve porcelain. Let's go to find it out. Uh, guys, did you hear the knocking sound in the background? And aren't you curious what that sound is? Uh, let's see that here we have an old man knocking here. And guys, let's go to find out what the old man is doing. Okay, so this kind of work is called carving porcelain, and it actually starts from Qing Dynasty, so it has quite a long history. So Mr. Dong is a very experienced craftsman here. He is a national level level art master in carving porcelain. Dong Lao, you are. Hello. Hello. Can you tell us about the craftsmen? Hmm. 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 就是把你要表现的题材呢，用颜料、用颜色，嗯，落到产品上，这是第一个步骤。嗯，第二个步骤呢，就是镌刻。嗯，镌刻呢，就是用合金工具，你、嗯、像这个镰刀，就是合金工具。嗯，这种呢，就是用钻石刀。嗯，钻石刀，用这些工具呢，用锤子，嗯，进行敲击。嗯，把。所有表现的画面呢，刻出来。嗯，这是第二步。嗯，第三步呢，就是上色、复色。嗯，复色呢，嗯，因为这个盘子是白的嘛，你要不复色呢，你表现不出刻的那个效果。对，复色的目的呢，就是把刻的的效果呢表现出来，这是第三步。嗯，第四步呢，就是要烤花。嗯，烤花。这个就是刻完了以后啊，上上陶瓷颜色，嗯、然后路窑呢再烤一遍，分、嗯、四个步骤。嗯。So I've asked Mr. Dong, <coughs> sorry, how many steps do we have here for carving porcelain? And actually, it has four steps. The first one is to draw and write, like a, you know, you have to draw the picture on the plate first so then you can carve and the second step is to carve to use uh, knives like this one and this one is uh, so uh, knives like this one is actually we have a diamond on the top of this knife and using this one and also uh, other tools to carve and the third step is to color to put color on the plate and the fourth so the Last steps, uh, step is called the uh, putting the plate in the fire, uh, in a higher temperature, and after that, the carving portion is done. So, uh, so Mr. Dong has carved for about uh, more than 40 years, so it's a very quite a long time. Mm. Uh, Mm-hmm. 你不但要深思，而且还有心思，啊，心思这是比较关键的这一点。嗯。So, uh, Mr. Dong told me that the hardest thing to carve here in this kind of work is to carve, you know, people, to carve portrait in things like that. Uh, 所以您比如说像这样的一个盘子，这样的一个作品，一般要刻多长时间？像这样的一个，像这样一个盘子，大概得开一个礼拜的时间。一个礼拜左右。啊，一个礼拜对。嗯
So for a piece of work like that, it usually takes about a week. 那您能不能？我比较好奇，想学一学，能不能教教我？可以，可以，可以。好好。So I'm asking Mr. Dong to teach me how to carve, and I'm going to try it. 好，我试一试，您教教我。哦，好，有点远，没关系。这样就拿着这个是吧？这是那，这是这只手。这只手拿着。左手拿拿拿刀。嗯。拿刀的方式这样。啊，这样的。哎呀，三个指头，像这个刀。嗯。这样。嗯，这只手拿拿锤子。这样。嗯，锤子。就是这个方向。嗯，你这个方向，就是根据这个画面的呀。嗯。方向不同，然后叫它交叉刻字。哦、嗯。你比如说，这一笔是这么这么来吧？嗯，那这样这样这样。嗯，对对对。嗯。对对。我觉得我好像没使上劲儿。那个这使劲劲。你可以刻这呗。这个。刻下边也行。哦，好，试一试。对对。哎，可以用大一点。它这个主要是在刻的过程中呢，你这个手啊还要移动，嗯，移动啊，然后呢再拿刀，慢慢慢慢再刻出来。啊、哦，所以这个就是两只手啊有很好的配合。配合。配合 so Mr. Dong told me that, uh, you can't just, you know, this is a very hard work. It's a kind of hard craftsmanship. You have to move both of your hands together. And I'm trying my best to do that. But 对，你刚才往哎，还往往那边走。往这边。嗯，往这边走，就能看到你刻的刀。哦。哎，这个东西挺大呀。不敢使劲。嗯，可以大一点，没事。嗯。I'm afraid that I will break this kind of plate, so I'm very careful. 哦、oh, ，Well, that's well involves a lot of hard work. 谢谢您。Okay, thank you very much. So that is how we make carving porcelain. Isn't that interesting? Well, time flies, and we're approaching the end of today's live show. How do you feel about modern Chinese porcelain? And are you interested in the process of making porcelain? And also, are you fascinated by some of the delicate porcelain artifacts, the finished products? Well, if you are interested in today's live, please、uh, leave comments and share the video. We'll be very grateful. Well, I'm going to appreciate. All this porcelain little puppets here, because it's dog ear in China. Well, thanks again for staying with us today, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.